A report last Friday from VentureBeat.com reveals seemingly a number of years of toxic working conditions at Moon Studios, the developers behind the Ori games. And in addition, a video posted on the same day by People Make Games thoroughly investigates three other major indie developers, including Journey co-creator Robin Hunicky, for extreme and extended cases of emotional abuse in which multiple employees and former employees shared testimonies of their experiences. This one's a lot, so... Let's get into it. Starting with Moon Studios, the article written by Dean Takahashi titled, Despite its beautiful Ori games, Moon Studios is called an oppressive place to work, is quite an extensive piece and includes a number of first-hand accounts that collectively say Moon Studios founders, Thomas Mahler and Gennady Coral have created a very toxic working environment. A quick content warning for verbal abuse, vulgar comments around abortion, rape, and an inappropriate joke about genocide. Issues at Moon Studios included complaints of racist and graphic jokes that can be seen by the entire studio and group chats, harassment, hyper-negative criticisms on work without proper context, or constructive feedback to address issues, big fights between the co-founders Mahler and Coral, as well as last-minute changes that cause a large amount of development time to be completely wasted, in turn causing crunch and other issues. According to an employee testimony, Mahler would say, someone's work looked like and sometimes the insults were much worse, like calling the developers failed abortions. The environment got so toxic that it led to high turnover at Moon Studios, but according to the employees, the founders didn't care. One employee mentioned they were hired to work on the second Ori game, Will of the Wisps, and they were excited to work with the talented team who made the first game, Ori in the Blind Forest, but they quickly realized a number of those developers had left the company. Specifically, they said, why did the art team leave? That was an alarm bell to me. The sound team didn't come back. I think Thomas and Gennady believe everyone is replaceable, which is not a great feeling when you go to work. Multiple employees who left Moon Studios say they were scarred with mental health problems and even considered changing industries entirely. Before VentureBeat published their story, they gave Mahler and Coral a chance to respond, and they actually did. In a joint response, they wrote, We don't believe the experiences suggested by your questions are representative of the more than 80 Moon Studios team members who are thriving and doing great work every day, nor do we believe they are representative of the experiences of former members of our team. Then they go on to explain they've made people happy, advanced their careers, and created two award-winning games. They also point out that their studio has a flat structure where they facilitate an open platform for developers to speak directly, and openly to each other. However, employees in the VentureBeat article point out that the open platform does more harm than good since it's more readily being used as a platform for quote, anti-woke culture, unquote, and an excuse to make inappropriate comments and jokes in the workplace. For example, according to one source in the piece, one day Mahler joked, Tyler is the only person who is aware of my devious plans to kill the Jews by making them work to death through game development. It was clearly a joke, according to the employee in the report, but probably not one that should be made in the workplace, if at all. And multiple employees mentioned that this type of tone was pretty constant. One employee who spoke with VentureBeat tried to contextualize the studio's policies around having an open platform and the co-founder's fear of PC culture interfering with their creative process, saying, they have a mentality where they think they're not politically correct. They don't wanna be censored, they don't wanna be corporate. They don't want to be like these other studios but it's just a justification to behave in any way they want to. Other studios attempt to make a comfortable work environment for everyone involved. I will say there is one instance in the story in which the open platform might have helped Moon Studios make a better creative decision. In one case, Mahler wanted a character in an upcoming game to be raped. It took about a month to convince him this was a bad idea for a plot in a video game where the object was to provide the character with the motivation for revenge. In Mahler and Coral's statement to VentureBeat regarding the issues at their studio, they acknowledged that their behavior towards each other at times may have come off as insensitive and made others feel uncomfortable, but then, again, go on to highlight their achievements and the positive impact they've made on their employees' lives. Then they concluded by saying, We are not perfect, but we deeply care about our talent and are constantly working hard to improve. If we have ever made anyone feel uncomfortable or let anyone down, we regret that and we will always strive to do better. Another employee in the article suggested that incredible work is getting done by talented people at Moon Studios, but that work is being done in spite of Mahler and Coral's toxic management issues, not because of them. Now, I wish I could say that was all, but another similar story dropped on the same day in the form of a YouTube video by People Make Games. That channel is largely supported by their Patreon subscribers, so they are able to specialize in investigative journalism. This particular video explores the issues with the distribution of power within the indie scene by reporting on three major indie developers accused of emotional abuse. The first two accounts in the video have been reported on or around in the past, but one surprising reveal were multiple people who came forward about game industry veteran 
Robin Hunnicky. Hunnicky has worked at EA, co-developed Journey, and founded the game studio Phenomena. Now, because it forms a larger narrative around a pattern of very successful indie dev auteurs, I'm going to quickly recap the People Make Games video. The first part is about Ken Wong, the founder and creative director of Mountains, who made Monument Valley and Florence. Employee accounts explain how Wong would tear people down, interrogating every aspect of their work without reason or alternatives. Things got so bad, the studio implemented a safe word policy in which employees could say the word pause to stop any one-on-one -on -one conversations with Wong, and then the studio's leadership would step in to mediate. Eventually, things fell apart completely in 2021, and the studio is still on hiatus. The second part of the video is about Steve Gaynor and the toxic culture formed by his leadership that basically ended Fulbright, the studio behind Gone Home, which was reported on by Polygon last year. And finally, the third part of the video, starting around 23 minutes in, is about Robin Hunnicky. People Make Games spoke with a mix of eight former and current employees who shared their own stories about emotional abuse they experienced while working with Robin. The common thread among them was that Robin used personal information about her employees at work in a way that was either humiliating or unprofessional. According to the testimonies, that sensitive information was also used to psychoanalyze or explain an employee's poor performance. This would include information about employees' sexuality, their dating lives, whether or not they were in therapy, or comments about their personal appearance. In one example, Robin commented during a meeting that an employee was, quote, struggling with their sexuality right now, so it makes sense that they are a little bit distracted, unquote. Now, while one example of someone talking out of turn or overstepping boundaries might not seem like the grounds for an entire investigative piece, the amount of people who are willing to come forward and their perspective forms a much bigger picture. During the development of the studio's second game, Wadam, Katamari creator Keita Takahashi was said to have made a barricade of chairs to prevent Hunaki from interacting with his team. One employee described the atmosphere at Phenomena during that time as tiptoeing around the house because your parents are hungover and alcoholics. Somebody is going to explode. When People Make Games reach out to Robin Hunnicky and Phenomena's CTO for a chance to comment, they declined. However, afterwards, a group of employees reached out to People Make Games to say they were concerned that if the story was to come to light, that Phenomena would spin the occurrences as an older version of the studio that's grown and changed since the development of their last two games. But essentially, Robin Hunnicky treats people better now. As a warning, the employees wrote, we wanted to let you know that it is a current pattern of behavior and that Robin Hunnicky continues to create a toxic environment. Once the People Make Games video went live, a number of other co-workers and colleagues came out with their own stories. One developer wrote, if you've wondered why I've been miserable despite what should be a dream position, so much is covered here at the 23 mark, referring to the People Make Games video. Robin Hunnicky has been an absolute nightmare to work, quote, with, unquote, would be too generous as there's zero collaboration. She treats me like a house n-word and you can see the exploitative here has been self-censored. Now others simply just quote tweeted the People Make Games video and vouch for its findings and testimonies. After about three days, Robin Hunnicky finally tweeted in response saying, leadership is a journey and often a difficult one. It saddens me to know people are hurting from mistakes I've made. I'm truly sorry. Right now I'm taking time to talk to people, focus on the feedback everyone is sharing and figure out next steps. So there it is, four separate successful game studios in the indie scene with reportedly very toxic working conditions created by their leadership. Obviously, it's not just an indie thing. We've heard similar types of stories come from AAA studios which have HR departments, uh, but it does make you wonder uh, about our kind of thing that we do in the industry where we kind of put auteurs up on a pedestal and they kind of just become this untouchable thing. Their employees are afraid to talk about them. They're afraid to confront them because of the ramifications that could have for the remainder of their careers or you know their current jobs. Um, it's really heartbreaking stuff. If you're in the games industry at all, you've, or even if you're not, you've likely seen Robin Hunnicky speak. Her demeanor is usually calm and cheerful. It's not something you'd expect from this type of developer who has been a very big advocate of diversity in games, of women in games, but it turns out behind closed doors, everything is not as picture perfect. So let us know in the comments how you're feeling about all of this. I personally am pretty heartbroken over the Ori news. I really like those games and it makes me pretty mad to think about the conditions that those games might have been made under. Uh, and you know, I know that a lot of people are gonna comment with like, that's everywhere in the game industry. And while that's true, it doesn't mean we shouldn't push for all this type of stuff to get better. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video right here on Inside Gaming.